Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is announcing radical ministry. As we follow the life that Jesus modeled, it is my desire that we find ourselves in the stories of Jesus. I want us to discover ourselves in all the experiences of Jesus. We need what he needed so we can do what Jesus said we can do. Last week, we followed the steps of Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. We learned from Jesus that we can trust the Lord for the provision we need for life. We can trust the Lord for the plan he has for our life, and we can trust the Lord for the protection we need in life. Jesus went into the desert by the leading of the Holy Spirit and came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. We read in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the report about him went through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. After the Spirit came upon Jesus, he returned to Nazareth, to announce the beginning of his public ministry. Luke says he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Ministry usually starts in your hometown where people might not see in you what the Lord sees in you. The Holy Spirit took Jesus from a humble home to give him a name that is above every other name. And he knows how to take you from your humble beginning and launch you into a radical ministry that will change the world around you. On the day that the scroll was placed on the table before Jesus to read, his life was changed forever. Jesus found his calling in the scroll of Isaiah. John the Baptist found his calling in Isaiah. I found my calling in Isaiah, and you can find yours in Isaiah as well. Luke chapter 4 and verse 17 says, Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. The anointing you carry will bring good news to downtrodden people. It will set people free from captivity, both physically and spiritually. Eyes will see and ears will open and the lame will walk. People will learn to walk in the favor of God upon their life. After reading from Isaiah, Jesus rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Luke chapter 4, verse 20 through 21. What a stunning announcement! Luke says in chapter 4 and verse 22, So they all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded from his mouth. The word witness carries with it the idea that what was just said resonated within the hearts of those who heard it. For the first time in 400 years, an authentic prophetic voice echoed through the synagogue of Nazareth. The people were hungry for God, and the people around you and me are also hungry for God and to hear an authentic, prophetic word declaring the presence of God to heal and to set people free. It was a high moment in Nazareth until someone asked the question. This was that question, Luke chapter 4 and verse 22. Isn't this Joseph's son? Now, as soon as we receive a word from the Lord, the enemy raises a question to attack that word. And that question 
rob the people of Nazareth from experiencing the power of God in their lives through the hands of Jesus. Jesus had as much power to release a Nazareth as he did anywhere, but the people cut themselves off from receiving it. Why did they do that? They believed a lie. There is always danger in asking the wrong question. And so how much power does the Lord have? Of course, you'll say to me, he has all power. But then how much power does the enemy have? Be careful about your answer, because the enemy only has the power that we surrender to him. We cannot allow the enemy's question to undermine the strength of a word we have from the Lord. Jesus did not lose his power, but the people who questioned his anointing lost access to his power in their lives. Now, how do we keep from losing access to Jesus' power? Listen to what Jesus said. He said, doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said to them, truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown, Luke chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Matthew adds these interesting words in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 44. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive the prophet's reward. And the one who will receive a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. What does this mean? If we honor a prophet, we will have access to the gift of being prophetic. And when we recognize the anointing on a servant, we have access to the gift that that servant carries. The people of Nazareth had their moment to say yes, but they allowed a question to undermine their opportunity. They declined access to the power of God through Jesus himself. Jesus said, I assure you uh, that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut up for three years and a half, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them but to the widow of Zarephath in the region of Sidon. He explained it this way. There were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet none of them was cleansed, only Naaman, the Syrian, Luke chapter 4 and verse 27. You see, Elijah carried an anointing for provision, and Elisha carried an anointing for healing. And sometimes it is shocking to see who is receptive to what God is doing. Provision and healing were both within the reach of Israel. And what you are seeking for is within your reach today. The breakthrough that you are looking for is in the hands of Jesus. Luke chapter 4 and verse 28 and 29 tells us the cost that they paid for believing a lie. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they arose up and drove him out of their town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so they could throw him down uh, from the cliff. That's the cost of believing a lie. Luke chapter 4 and verse 30. But passing through their midst, he went away. What a tragic moment for the people of that town. Jesus walked away from them. Don't let Jesus walk away from you today. If he's knocking on the heart of your door, today is the day to receive from Jesus all that he has to offer you. Receive him as your savior. Receive him as the one sent from God to set you free. Receive him as the one who has power to provide and power to heal uh, your, uh, your diseases in life. Next week, we'll continue standing, studying the life Jesus modeled. 
But before we leave you, let's take a few moments and pray together. Father, I thank you so much that you're passing by people right now, people who are ready to hear your voice, people who are ready to say yes. And I open ears and I open eyes to see and to hear and to receive you as their Savior at this very moment. There's a great anointing upon your life because you have been called through the words of Isaiah to proclaim and to release healing and to release provision. Uh, So if you are blind right now, I pray for your eyes to be opened. I pray for ears to be opened of people who are listening right now. If you are lame, get up in the power of the Holy Spirit and walk right now. Uh, Your legs are being strengthened by the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you, as he touches you, as I've just prayed. What you respect, you will carry. So I invite you to find someone who's moving in healing and deliverance and in the power of the Holy Spirit and ask, walk with that person until you can do what that person does. Broken hearts will be healed uh, and you will find your ministry. You will find yourself walking in radical ministry because you are walking in the steps of Jesus and you'll be doing what Jesus did. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.